welcome back to the cordless vacuum guide and in this video we'll be looking at the Ruma product line specifically for the year 2022 and beyond. I've tested most models in their product range over the past few years from the entry level 600 series to the flagship J7 Plus but I have not yet tested the combo J7 Plus their latest with a retractable mop. This video will overview these products where each model falls into the hierarchy and which are the best options for specific needs. So let's get into it. A lot has changed since iRobot was launched a few decades ago. The early generation Rumor products all utilize a random navigational algorithm that was inefficient. But with the influx of brands like Roborock, Shark, Dreamy, and such, they were forced to develop their own smart robot vacuum, which we'll look into detail later in this video. These entry-level options still exist, the 600 series to be specific, but with one significant upgrade. All use an 1800 mAh lithium-ion battery, offering better longevity and a more consistent power band. Several iterations of these models existed with varying color schemes, but all are similar under the hood, using the same motor and brush layout underneath. The current one is the Roomba 692-694, which is basically the same robot as the 675 and 694 but with some cosmetic variances. For a brief period, our robot had the E-Series, which combined the features of the I-Series and the 600 series. The Roomba E5 utilized the same frame and brush roll as the more premium I-7, but with a random algorithm. Ultimately, the I-3 replaced the E5 as a premium entry-level option, using a more refined navigation where the robot moves in straight lines, but without premium-level features like map saving, containment, selective room cleaning, and more. This model is part of the i-series, iRobot's first with a clean base station, so it has a self-emptying feature. There are i3 options with or without the clean base stations. Models with it have a plus designation beside the i3 branding, while the robot-only models don't have the plus beside the model number. Obviously, options without it are cheaper than models with a clean base station. Other sub-variants are available, like the i2 and i4, but these are essentially the same robots as the i3, but available in select merchants. When choosing between these variants, opt for the cheapest one available. A more refined option of the i3 is the i7, the first Roomba with a self-emptying feature. The i3 and i7 use the same body, dustbin, and brush layout, but with a V-Slam algorithm, or a top-mounted camera plus slam, so it will draw maps and save them. Also, the map saving unlocks other helpful features like keep-out zones, clean zones, and selective room cleaning, giving consumers more control over robot vacuum deployment. iRobot's most potent vacuuming option is the S9 Plus, its first and only D-shaped robot with a square front and 9.5-inch wide extractors. This model is iRobot's best-performing vacuuming option with its rare combination of a higher airflow motor and efficient pickup from the counter-rotating extractors. I'm not sure if this model was an experiment from iRobot since they reverted to the round-shaped frame with a J7 and Combo J7. Unlike Roborock, Roomba products don't have much variance with airflow. There are two categories for Roomba, the high airflow options and the low airflow alternatives, which make up most of the product line. Only the S9 Plus and 980 are the high airflow options with 25 and 19.74 CFM respectively. If you're not familiar with how I get these figures, I use an anemometer and multiply the output by 0.026099 to get the result. It's not a foolproof method to measure power because many variables are involved. Still, it's one metric I can consistently extract and compare with other brands across the board. With how robot vacuums work, it's hard to get actual power figures without disrupting their functionality since it has many sensors that can disable the robot when these are triggered. One consistent aspect I notice when testing robot vacuums is that high airflow options tend to pick up more debris than low airflow options. Outside the S9 Plus and 980, other Roomba options hover between a 6 and 8 CFM range. Not much variance to be honest, and this is reflected in the cleaning tests. One feature that benefits Roomba products is the dirt detect system, where the robot does additional passes if it detects more debris. It's one reason their products are some of the better options for deep cleaning carpet. Looking at the scores, you can see a gap between the high and low airflow options. The Roomba S9 Plus and 980 are the best performing options and the only two above 90% in deep cleaning and above 99% on surface debris pickup. Other Roomba options hovered in the mid-90s for surface debris and in the 80s for embedded sand. 
One issue with the 600 series is the inefficient navigation combined with the fast spinning side brush that scatters debris. It's less of an issue with the I series because of the more predictable back and forth navigation, but still the side brush tends to scatter piles of dirt it touches. Only the Roomba S9 Plus did not have the debris scattering issue because of its slower rotating side brush. It's also the best and most efficient option for edge cleaning because of the square front and side brush placement at the edge. Roomba options with the newer counter-rotating extractors will be better at picking up hair. Though the Roomba 694 picked up well, the bristleless nature of these extractors is easier to clean versus the bristle brush of the entry-level 694, where you'll need to use scissors to dislodge hair. The spin capacity will vary depending on the model. Entry-level options like the 694 have wide dustbins but the low belt line door limits its capacity to 300 ml. The E series uses the same dustbin as the I series and J series, so these will have a slightly larger capacity between 400 and 500 ml, depending on whether it has a clean base station. Options without the clean base station will have a 500 ml capacity, while options with it go down to 400 ml because of this indentation housing the auto empty port. The S9 Plus has around 20% more volume with the clean base station at 500 ml because of the larger container and scissor type hinges, making it easy to empty and clean. But the largest dustbin capacity belongs to the 900 series robots with a whopping 600 ml capacity. Unfortunately, these options don't have a clean base station with a 2.5 liter bag, which more than quadruples the bin capacity of options without a self emptying feature. Another benefit of models with a self-emptying feature is it empties the dustbin for you, so it's more autonomous than options without it. As I've mentioned in the intro, early generation Roomba options exclusively utilize a random algorithm, meaning it pinballed around randomly, until iRobot unveiled the Roomba 980, their first with a vSlam algorithm. Currently, most Roomba products utilize vSlam outside the 600 series and i3. VSLAM combines a top-mounted camera and SLAM. Options with it include the Roomba i6, i7, i8, S9, J7, and a Combo J7. Note that iRobot moved the J-series camera from the top to the front to accommodate the obstacle-avoiding sensors. The front sensors also double as the primary navigational sensors of these J-series robots. Both are the only Roomba options with obstacle avoidance and the best I've tested so far, with their ability to evade stuff like pet feces and stretch wires. All latest generation 600 series, E series, and I series robots use the same 1800 mAh lithium ion battery with a 75 minute runtime. The J series has a slightly larger battery and runs slightly longer at 90 minutes, while the S9 and 980 use a larger 3600 mAh battery. But since these robots use a high powered motor, their range is shortened to 75 minutes, more so in the max setting at 45 minutes. Fortunately for the smart navigating Roomba options, a recharge and resume feature negates the below average runtime because it resumes cleaning automatically after recharging. Also, VSLAM options have a mapping run where the vacuum motor is shut off to extend range, focusing solely on map creation. Outside the high airflow options, the S9 Plus and 980, most Roomba options aren't that noisy. Most hover in the mid 60s decibel level. That's one advantage of low airflow options if noise is a deciding factor. But the aggressive edge cleaning algorithm of these Roomba options, except for the J-series, means it may bump into furniture hard and scrape them. So it's a heads up. All Roomba options are compatible with the iRobot Home app, and their features will vary depending on the model and feature specifications. Entry-level 600 series, E-series, 900 series, and i3 have basic features, mostly involving scheduling and remote access to the robot through its Wi-Fi connectivity. Thanks to the SLAM algorithm, options with the SLAM come with more features like keep-out zones, clean zones, and map saving. Unfortunately, the iRobot app doesn't have a live map feature in other brands like Roborock and Yidi. Only time will tell if they will implement this feature. The Roomba J7's obstacle avoidance system has some additional features to complement it. iRobot calls it obstacle areas, where it collates all the objects detected and allows consumers to convert these into keep-out zones. Another update with the iRobot app is the cleaning history tab, 
it shows a list of cleaning runs along with the corresponding maps, duration, and more. Choosing a Roomba will depend on factors like budget, feature needs, home size, whether you want or need a self-emptying feature. The best vacuuming and most efficient Roomba options are the Roomba S9 Plus and 980, since these are the only higher airflow options with smart navigation. One variance is that the S9 Plus has a clean base station, while the Roomba 980 is an older model without it. Also, the latter doesn't have map saving, so features like keep out zones or clean zones aren't available. The Roomba J7 Plus and Combo J7 Plus are the best at obstacle avoidance, maybe in the industry. The Roomba J7 Plus is the only robot vacuum I've tested that can avoid pet feces and stretch wires consistently. And it's the only option with a POOP guarantee, so if it touches dry pet feces, our robot will replace it for free. I also like the J7 base station because of the low profile design and the space for the extra bag. I like the i3 the best for cheaper options because it has a gyroscope based navigation, so it moves in neat rows and its price isn't far off the Roomba 694. The Roomba 694 is a decent performing robot, but its navigational limitations mean it won't clean multiple rooms well and may get lost. So I'd only recommend it vacuuming on a per room basis. If this video has been helpful to you, consider giving it a thumbs up. It goes a long way in growing this channel and reaching more consumers. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I publish new comparisons like this and have a bunch lined up. Links are in the description below for more information about Roomba products and individual product reviews. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.